Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Jabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to um, start on a folio. I had lots of people um, when I did my giveaway and I asked you to say what projects you would like to see. And lots of people um, said folios and I know that you've all sort of said that in the past. I have done kind of um, folios, you know, with you guys before. I've tended to kind of do some on film and some not. So I will try and kind of do the entire basis of the folio um, with you guys. Um, yeah, just using basically a variety of envelopes here. So I've got a whole variety of envelopes. Some are coffee dyed, well, most are coffee dyed. Just these ones aren't. Um, so let's get started. So these obviously are massive, you know, kind of A4 envelopes. So this has been coffee dyed, but I'm just going to, although it's self, you know, self stick, I'm going to just kind of reinforce it with some glue just in case. So I'll just stick that flat down. Now, part of the reason why obviously folios are a bit tricky is, <clears throat> or I certainly find them a little bit tricky, is I've never really done the same thing on a folio twice. So, um, you know, this is not kind of a one size fits all um, tutorial or anything like that. It's very much kind of build on your envelopes and build on your flaps and things like that, just as suits you at the time. You know, there's no kind of formula that's, oh, I always do this. You know, I've never, I don't think, done the same thing kind of twice in a folio. So, um, yeah, just kind of that's something to be aware of is literally, it's just anything goes, is my take on, on a folio, really. So I'm going to just start by obviously folding my A4 envelope in half. Just get my bone folder to straighten that out. Okay. <clears throat> then as you can see, I've got another one the same size. So I think probably what I'm going to do is again, glue the flap down. And then what I will do is I think glue them on together somehow. So let's just glue that down. Again, it's got the self, self seal, but I will reinforce it with glue only because I've coffee dyed these now. So of course the, you know, because they've got very wet, I feel that the glue might be, you know, not quite so strong. And I mean, obviously sometimes you do get them where the glue is absolutely rubbish. It's just these particular envelopes. I only bought them quite recently and they're pretty good. But that said, obviously, I'm just aware that the um, coffee dyeing process just may have weakened the, you know, sticking power a little bit. So just like that. And then I'm going to, I think, fold this one now in half as well. Like that. <clears throat> Okie dokie, stick that one down. Okay, and then what I want to do is have it so as I've got, you know, it opening sort of two different sides, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, I'm going to have it like that. So all I'm going to do at this point is glue these two pieces together. But before I do that, I might just want to have kind of a few things poking out from here as well. So let's just check whether there's a better side to get that. Okay, that one seems to fit slightly better. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's all, all fine. So I'm just going to take another envelope and you see, I might want to actually have this kind of tucked in to that flap. So before I do that, what I'm going to do, and I don't need to do this for all of them, but this one's a particularly flimsy envelope, I feel. So, it, you know, it feels to me like it's a little bit vulnerable to tearing. So I'm just going to kind of reinforce that with some paper and I've got some decorative papers here. Uh, let me just decide which one that, I, sorry, I just knocked the camera, I do apologise. Um, just decide which one that I'd like. So I'm just going to take this and this, I have printed all of this. This is my spring tea kit and I've printed it all just on copy paper for this project. Um, or this part of the project. I'm not saying I won't add some thicker pieces later, but for the covering of the folio, I have done it with thicker paper before. And actually, to be honest, I think you're better off using thinner paper, you know, for the actual kind of foundation parts of the folio. 
Right, so I'm going to just pop that in there. So let's move this out the way. And, you know, I'm purely doing this really to, you know, strengthen and reinforce the envelope. That's, you know, that's the only reason really for doing this. Well, and I mean, it will look pretty too, but yeah, I mean, my main kind of mission here is just to reinforce that envelope slightly. So just going to put that in there like that and that one in there like that. Now I've not coffee dyed these papers or anything. You can probably see um, purely because, you know, it's still not the nicest weather. So I don't want to be going out or, you know, I don't want to be making loads of mess all over trying to coffee dye the papers. So um, yeah, otherwise I probably would have coffee dyed them if I'm truthful. Okay, so then I'm just going to cut around obviously here because we don't need all that paper on here. Like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of really make sure that this is, you know, really nicely stuck down. And then we'll just fold that flap where, oops, where the fold was, if I can even see where the flap was. Or the fold, sorry. Okay. So just going down where the original fold was. Like that. Okay. Okay. Right, so that's that one. So I just bring the you know the base of the folio back in. So again, that's going to tuck in here. So it's just going to be a sort of, you know, foldy out flap like that and then I mean at this point you know you could add as many as you like so I'll just pull in a couple more so I've got this one which we could have then you know a second one so as we've got then a couple of foldy out pieces would be quite nice this one's a stronger envelope so you know I don't feel it necessarily needs you know reinforcing like the first one did so that's going to be those and, you know, you could even have kind of an envelope here at the bottom if you wanted. I mean, it's kind of getting quite complicated then. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's, you know, that's really fun to have things like that. You could have it folded down there. You could have it folded up here. So you have a top flap. You know, choices are kind of endless and, you know, there's no limit to the things that you can do. So... All I'm going to do first of all is just glue down this envelope into this envelope, if that makes sense. So just like that, just glue that down. Okay. Again, just kind of spread that out with my glue spreader. Like that, okay. Just dab off any excess glue. Okie dokie, so that's going to go over like that. And then this one, obviously, I want to have in there as well. So again, I'm just going to do exactly the same. Just run some glue down here to attach that one. Okay, so that one is just going kind of like over that one. And again, just kind of press that down, make sure it's really nicely glued on. Yeah, I mean, I love making these, I have to say, from the point of view of, you know, they can be as complicated or not as you like. Um, and I do love the fact that they can be literally different every single time, which just makes them really, really, really fun to make. So, um, you know, I don't really like making kind of the same things over and over again. I mean, I don't mind journals because, of course, they look so different with all the different pieces that we put in them. But... I mean, on the whole, I really like doing kind of, um, you know, slightly different things each time. So this is just perfect for things like that. So that is going to glue into there. Now, just before I glue it, you might want to have then 
Oh, that one's actually got the flap stuck down, so that's a bit annoying. Um, but that's fine. I can, I can get around that for something else. I'm not going to pull the flap up because I've got some others. So let me just grab another one. Right, okay. So just grab another one. You could have one then opening this way, you know, so that when you open, you've got this flap here, you've got these two here, you know, absolutely, completely and utterly make it as mad and wild, you know, as you as you fancy, really. Um, I can't decide now of myself. Uh, right, I suppose it will depend a little bit what I'm going to do on this side. So on this side, I might put a pocket, I think. Well, I, I will put a pocket. So let's have a look and see. Sorry, just reaching down now for another envelope, just seeing whether I've got some long ones that would go the whole length of there. It's not quite not quite the whole length, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Um, because that maybe will kind of persuade me how to do this one. So I could have then, you know, pocket here. I hope that you can kind of all see what I'm doing here. Um, what do you think? Well, then does everything open that way and it's a little bit needs something going the other way uh okay yep i'm going to have it this way around so again i'm just going to stick that flap down and of course you could always cut your flaps down so that they're not you know the whole triangle if you see what i mean because there's no need for it to be as big as it is um so yeah you could always do that i'm just going to pop that on there oops my gosh i've made hideous mess of that but I mean it's not a problem because we're going to be covering all of this up so wipe that down and just spread that out with my glue spreader jokey. yeah and you just want to kind of check that you've not compromised you know your fold bit here because you know then it could be a little bit tight for closing you know opening and closing really so yeah it looks kind of like it's in the right place okay so that's that one and then this one here I'm going to have along there and again you could then add another little flap on here so let me just have a look around and see you know what I'm going to be using because I haven't really kind of given this <laughs> that much thought as to what you know what bits and pieces I'm actually going to be using and yeah to be honest I probably should have done uh right just having a quick look around well I mean what we could do is just use some some coffee dyed paper or got some of this buff coloured card and oh, not that one uh, hmm. let's just have a look and see what I've got laying around because it's always good to use things that are just you know just here laying on the on the desk really so and that's quite small okay let's just see what else I've got I've got this one which could hang in there let's just have a look oops That could go there like that. That's quite nice, isn't it? And then you've got an actual... Yeah, that's quite nice. So that was obviously just laying on my desk. So um, just going to glue that down on there. Like that. And then what I'll do is glue the other envelope in. Now again, I'm using envelopes of course you don't have to use envelopes. I mean, I just kind of think the envelopes give it quite a, um, like, padded feel. I mean, of course, they're not padded envelopes. Um, but because they're then sort of hollow inside, if you see what I mean, you know, because they're empty envelopes, they do give it a sort of almost like a fat kind of um, ch chunkiness kind of thing there that, of course, if you used, you know, flat papers or you know, just some card or anything, you're not going to have quite the same feeling, I think. 
Um, but, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't. But, you know, I have done that in the past with um, different folios. I mean, it just depends what, you know, what the finished outcome you're hoping to be. Okay, so I'm going to have that like that. Yeah, that would be nice. So before I glue that on, of course, what I might like to do is actually cover up here with some decorative paper because it's going to be, you know, easier to do it now rather than when I've actually stuck the stuck the pieces down. So I've got this one here. So I think what I'll do, oh, let's use my tear ruler. I'm trying to use this a bit more this year. I mean, yeah. I don't always get on with it that brilliantly, but <clears throat> I'm trying to trying to use it a bit more. So we're just going to put that down like that. And then I'm just going to I'll just fold that up like that. And okay, whoops. Okay. And then I'll just tear this piece down. like that okay right so that can then be glued over there and it just covers up obviously that envelope flap so okay so i hope everyone's having a good day hope you're doing some crafting having a nice time it's a miserable day here today no sun to be seen anywhere unfortunately okay right let's just spread that glue out with the glue spreader and again you know once you start getting some layers down of papers and things like that your folio will start then well a it's going to start looking sort of prettier and b it's going to start feeling quite chunky and um you know, just having that sort of scrumptious effect, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. I mean, uh, there's no guarantee, but yeah, hopefully it will. So, yeah. Now what I'm going to do is obviously pop this one down here. So, just going to glue this down all around here. Oops. Okay, so just going kind of as close to the edge as I can probably should have actually decorated this envelope up really first before sticking it down but you know it doesn't matter really you know just whichever way that you find easiest and again just mop that up I mean obviously as you can see my envelope is a little bit short for the you know the base envelope but that's absolutely fine it's not going to be a problem my glue's seeping out everywhere and I've only got my tissue here at the moment. So it's actually, um, yeah, just some, just some toilet roll because I'd run out of kitchen towel um, when I was cleaning off my paintbrush and drying it. So, uh, yeah, I might have to go and get one of my dry wipes in a moment. Okay, right, let's just really make sure that's stuck down nicely. Okay, right, while that's drying, I'm just going to go and get my um, wipe, hold on. Okay, so I'm armed with my, my dry wipe now, so that's a bit better. Right, so that's stuck down there, and then we've got obviously a couple of um, foldy pieces here. So we have not stuck this in yet, whoops, this one in yet. So we want to stick that down. Now, obviously, just before I do that, I just want to make sure that I don't want to have kind of a flap coming out, because you can then stick your flap, let me move the camera slightly stick your flap under here if I wanted to have something at the bottom it's not the end of the world because obviously if I stick that down and then think oh I would have liked something I can always stick it onto the envelope so I'm just going to go for it and um just attach this into the or you know onto the uh the other envelope so all I'm going to do is obviously go around the three sides like that 
because I'm hoping that the top I'm going to leave as a big opening pocket. So just want to kind of make sure that that folds, you know, still accessible to be able to actually open your folio and then glue your pieces together. So that side and that side. Again, just checking that I can still open and close it. Okie dokie. Like that. And then of course we've got the other side which we've not kind of touched yet. So just glue those down, make sure they're nicely attached. Okay. So on the other side, as I say, I mean, I have not done one of these, you know, so that they're identical or anything like that. So, you know, this is not hard and fast rules. This is just how I'm fancying doing it today um, for this particular one. But, you know, I guess I'm trying to give you just the basics or the basis, the basis for building your folio up and just kind of showing you, hopefully, that, you know, you could really can have your pockets and folds and tucks and what have you, you know, however you fancy at the time. So on this one, I could have kind of a couple of pockets here, but actually I think I'm going to have them here instead. Because I just fancied having a couple going in this way because otherwise everything is going, you know, sideways or lengthways on. So yeah, I think I would probably prefer to have those here. So this is just some cardstock. It's actually some, um, you know, from a card making kit. And um, I've just coffee dyed it. So it's quite thick card already. So I really don't need to do anything much to this. Well, anything, anything at all, in fact. Just cut it to size. So if we take this one, and what I'll do is just cut this down here. Just cut it down here, like that. Okay. Oh, it needs to needs to come in slightly more. It's slightly too wide still. Okay. I'm not sure which side I cut now, so uh, it seems like a shame to have cut the actual original straight edge, doesn't it? Because, of course, that was probably straighter than the edge that I cut, but never mind. I mean, again, it's no big deal. It doesn't have to be the exact measurement of this because, you know, the chances are we will be, you know, having some lace and things like that over those um, folded edges and things anyway. So you just want to really, we're just ensuring that it actually fits on here. So... If I just imagine that being stuck down now, you want to make sure that this is going to fold in and not get kind of like compromised there. So I might need to even bring it in slightly more on this side. So, okay, so hopefully that's now going to be narrow enough to go on there. Yeah, okay. So I want to then have another one just sort of on the top of that and I probably want to just take it up to about there so yeah just use that as my guide to trim that off okay and then of course I just need to bring it in on this side again so what I might do is actually take this to the sewing machine now and stitch around this because it will just add kind of another little dimension and just make it look quite attractive to glue it down onto there. Um, just before I do that, I might want to just check whether I want to have kind of any of our decorative papers or anything. Only because obviously once it's stitched together, it's not going to be quite so easy to actually, you know, get to. So if I want to have them, you know, like tucked in here at all, now's the time so just take this this is obviously just the sort of scrap from that other piece that I used so I think I'll just have that there like that 
So we'll just glue that on. Okie dokie. So we'll just pop that on there like that. Okay, and just mop up any glue that's kind of coming out. Right, so I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine and literally all I'm going to do is stitch around like that to hold it together. And then I will trim that side down, you know, in line with the other side. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. So all I've done is literally stitched around like that. This is open, um, as you can see at the bottom of that pocket. So I could leave that open and that way what I could do is obviously get, you know, bigger pieces, sorry, in this pocket, um, bigger pieces rather than if I shut that off, I'm only going to have that much depth, if you see what I mean. Whereas if I leave that open, I've got a much bigger pocket. Um, yeah, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to shut that off or not, but I'm just going to trim this down. Okay, like that. And then we're just going to pop that onto here. So again, this is another opportunity where if we wanted to have a kind of flap at the bottom, we could add that now. But, you know, it's not a big deal because like I say, you can always add flaps in these pockets, you know, in this pocket here and things like that. So, you know, you don't kind of have, it's not like a, oh, if you miss it now, you're going to have lost the chance because you can always add them, you know, in other ways. So I'm just going to glue this down like that and actually spot the spot the mistake I should have probably now actually put my paper down on this top bit before gluing the pocket down because of course now it's going to be much trickier to actually you know put any paper there I wouldn't be able to for instance you know put it under that pocket but you know that's fine um, but just a kind of note to self really <laughs> is if you want to have some decorative paper, you know, like here, you're probably better off sticking it down before sticking your pocket on. But you know, it's not, not the end of the world if you don't. So again, just really press that down because you want everything, you know, really glued down. Okay, and I mean, obviously this is quite lumpy because although I've ironed everything that's been coffee dyed, of course, the coffee dyeing does kind of leave it a little bit lumpier and bumpier than it would be if it hadn't been coffee dyed, if you see what I mean. So, you know, I've got lots of lumps and bumps on here. So hence the need for really pressing down on the glued parts. Okay, so that's that piece. So we'll come over now to the, you know, what I would term as now the back of the folio. And, you know, again, there's no right or wrong. This could be the front. Or this could be the front, you know, we'll kind of play it by ear because, of course, as the folio evolves, you know, I might kind of decide to go with the other side being the front. OK, right. Let's have a look and see what we're going to have here. So I've got this small envelope, which oops, I've actually got two. Um, I haven't used anywhere. Now, as you can see, again, <laughs> spot the deliberate mistake. I've not tucked anything into this flap here. Um, I mean, if I'm truthful, I just totally didn't really give us thought um but equally you know this is a good sort of exercise to say you know you don't need to have tucked it under this flap because you can always layer your elements after you know gluing the pieces down if that makes sense so you know all of your envelopes and flaps and what have you they do not need to be tucked in to another en envelope they can all be glued on to the envelope if you see what I mean so onto the surface like that so I've got this tiny envelope which of course on its own is pretty insignificant and pretty pretty rubbish looking so I'm just going to have a look and see what else I've got here that I might like to use I mean I've got some paper here which I could just make a kind of paper pocket to be honest um, rather than an envelope pocket and that would be quite nice so I'm just going to glue this down. Oh, sorry. It's obviously one that I've printed off, you know, front and back. When I've been making my printables, I kind of, 
you know you have to print them off obviously multiple times so I don't want to obviously waste paper so um, yeah I obviously just reuse reuse from when I've been printing off other printables okay so for instance like that so I'm just going to chop this down on the edge okay and then I'm just going to glue this in together whoops Oh, now I'm seeing this paper. I'm actually kind of like, oh, I'm making a folio with these papers now. I think these are my Covent Garden papers, but um, yeah. <laughs> you have a vision in your mind of, you know, what you want to do with the project. And then kind of, I don't know about you guys, but I then spot another paper or another, I don't know, ribbon or envelope or something else and think, oh, I wouldn't mind using that now or a book, you know. Um, so yeah, maybe that's... Maybe that's another one to do a folio from. Okay. So again, just mop that up. So this then, again, could go there. And then what we could do is, again, stitch around it so it's a bit thicker. Uh, not thicker, sorry. So it's got more decorative detail. And then we can just hook kind of flaps and what have you onto there. But again, we don't need to leave it like that. We could always put another sheet to make it a double pocket. So again, let me just have a look through, see what other papers I've got here in, you know, copy paper thickness. Oh, have I got any other that in copy paper thickness? I'm not sure that I have now. Well, that's just always the way, isn't it? Hold on. What's that one? Oh dear. Well, that's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think I've got any other. So I've got this one, which is not coffee, uh, copy paper thickness. It's thicker than that. But I mean, I could use that, to be honest. Well, if I'm doing that, I've got quite a few different ones, actually, that I could use. Oh, maybe. Well, maybe I do like the brown, actually. So again, let's just have a look and see, would we prefer that kind of coming out under there? Let's just have a look. Or do we want the brown on the top of the green? It's a tough decision, isn't it? I think I prefer it actually, the green on top of the brown, funnily enough. So obviously I haven't got, you know, a ton of room on here. So I just need to put that there and then all I'm going to do is kind of fold this over. This is my my version of measuring here, like that. Okay. And just squish that down. I mean, you know, again, you may be, you know, would prefer measuring your pieces. I mean, as you know, I personally, I'm not one for measuring. So for me, that would just kind of throw me off course completely and I'd end up just mucking it up completely if I was to measure. So, you know, but if you prefer measuring, then that's great too. Okay. So you just come down to there and then, and then just put this on the top. Okay. And I'm just going to trim that down. And then what I'm going to do, I think, again, just like I did with the planer one over the other side, is I'm just going to take this across to the sewing machine and, again, just stitch those together so that then the two pieces will just go onto here. You can see I've screwed this up now. Um, but that's fine because I might actually even make it slightly smaller, to be honest, anyway. Um, you know, so we've got more of the coffee dyed paper showing. So I will be back. Okay, I'm back. So if you can see there, I've actually stitched it in quite a, you know, quite a bit. So I'm just going to trim it down along there instead because I just thought actually I'd quite like some more of that coffee dyed paper showing. And I thought this would look quite pretty. So just trimming that along there, trim out my threads. 
I'm not going to reinforce my um, paper. It's thickish. I mean, it's not obviously the thickest, so I'm going to have to be slightly delicate, you know, with it. Um, but I think, I think it probably is fine. Um, oh, famous last words, and now I'm kind of doubting myself. So, oh, well, perhaps I should reinforce that. And again, <laughs> hindsight's a wonderful thing. I probably should have reinforced it first before even stitching the other piece on. But, you know, like all these things, it really isn't the end of the world. I can just do that now. So it's, you know, it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to go round, whoops, go round with my glue. And then just, you know, by reinforcing, I just mean literally sticking some book page onto there. Just to give it a bit more strength. Okay. So just pop, oh no, no, I've not got enough. Not oh, got enough, a big enough book page. What a wally. I should have checked that, shouldn't I, before before trying to glue it down. Well, I've got another piece here, so I'm just going to use this. Okay. Oh, lucky I have a whole ton of paper on my desk, isn't it? <laughs> okay, right, let's just glue this one down like that. Again, just spread that out with my glue spreader so I mean as you can see <laughs> there's not really much that can't be overcome um you know if you kind of glue your pieces together before you meant to or I don't know stitch them together before you meant to you know most things can all be just overcome so um yeah don't kind of panic and definitely don't throw things in the bin because <laughs> um you know sometimes obviously people say you know, ladies kind of say that they've made something and they're not happy and they put it in the bin. And, you know, of course, I've done that myself with lots of things as well. But honestly, I don't think I do that now because actually, you know, most things can be reworked. And even if you have to rework them, you know, a couple of times, eventually you'll get them to, you know, to look like something that you're happy with. So, right, let's just check that I've got this the right way up now. Right, just pressing that down because again, those lumpy envelopes, I don't want to have kind of gaps along there. So, okay, hopefully that's okay. Right, so then we're going to have this one here like that. So it's stronger now, which, you know, I am kind of happy with. Um, and then we've got that little envelope, which, you know, we could tuck in here would be quite nice wouldn't it and again then you know let's not stop there let's have some more flaps going on so as if we don't have enough going on in here as already I'm just going to grab in another another envelope oh that's a bit white hang on let me just have a look uh, probably would be better to use the similar color to the one on the other side so They're very small Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Hold on, let me just have another look, see if I've got some more. Because ideally I'd prefer it being the full length style envelope again. Uh, ah, what's this? No? Oh, would you believe it? I only appear to have those tall ones in... Um, oh in quite white colours. I've got some buff envelopes, but again, they're not the full size. Does that matter? Perhaps I'll just go for that, shall I? Did I put any buff colour envelopes on the other side? I can't actually remember. Well, it doesn't matter too much because we have got quite a bit of brown or, you know, by the end of this, we will have, you know, bits with brown and things like that. So yeah, it's all, it's all fine. So for this one, I might just chop this down a little bit like that okay and then we're going to put that in there I'm going to stick this down here right so let's pop this envelope in just into that pocket like that 
Okay, oops. What's that one? And then this one I'm going to just stick down onto whoops, onto the page or onto the you know the main envelope, the main base. Get rid of that bit of glue. Otherwise it will be stuck down just in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Well in the middle anyway. Not necessarily in the middle of nowhere, but just in the middle. Okay. Right. Again, just check that your fold is still kind of operational because you know, it's quite easy to just end up going too close to that fold. And, you know, I mean, I've done it lots of times myself. And then it just makes it difficult to open and close. So, you know, it's just something to be a little bit aware of, I think. So, pressing that down. Okie dokie. Okay, looking good. And then this envelope here, I'm going to have on this side. Now, just checking. Uh, do I want it on that side? Just thinking, because this would be quite a good spot to put some lace down here. Um, which, again, if I have my envelope then this way, my lace is not really going to operate properly. Because, of course, you know, the envelope wouldn't want to open if the lace is pushed down here or, you know, stuck down there. So it's just another thing to kind of bear in mind. Um, so from that point of view, you know, I might prefer to have my envelope on this side and then another sort of pocket running down there. So again, I'm on the hunt for another envelope, would you believe? <sighs> okay, let me just switch the camera off and have a look, hold on. Right, I did not find the envelope that, or you know, the style of envelope that I was looking for. But what I did find was an A5 kind of envelope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down here. Okay, on the flap. Like that. Okay. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is just literally fold it over like this. So, I mean, technically, or, you know, from the from the external appearance, it looks very much like this pocket, if you see what I mean. But this one is made out of an envelope. So, again, we've got that more squishy type of feel, which is really super nice. So, I'm just sticking that down like that. And then what I'm going to do is have this flap here like that and that way I can have some lace running down here it's not going to be in the way of anything else and then I've still got a sort of flap here which you know it all works then really really well so again just kind of press that down like that so let's glue our envelope down first with the flap that we cut down slightly okay So, you know, as close to the edge as possible, really. Let me just dab up that glue. Okay, press that down. Like that. Oops. Okay, and then I'm just going to, again, just spread out that glue with my glue spreader. Like that. You know, just making sure that my envelope's really nicely stuck down. Like that. Oops. Stuck down and straight would be better. Luckily it's still movable. Okay, so that's my envelope there. And then before I stick my other envelope pocket on, I'm going to just cover this with some decorative paper. So, well, let's just use my tear ruler going to tear some down and do that and then we have a sort of collage type effect going on not very really great is it um we could have that one let me just bring my you know what's going to be my pocket in 
Mm -hmm. Always quite good, isn't it, to check what you're going to be sticking down before you go for it because, um, you know, it's going to ultimately kind of help you decide. So actually, I'm going to go for this one. Then I've got the right length. So I'm just going to tear that off. So this one now, it goes the right length. So I'm just going to go like that. And then we're just going to trim that down here. Like that, okay. Again, now I'm just going to tear this like that at the bottom. Right, and we're going to glue this on. Now all this, you know, the purpose of this is it's just to cover up the envelope flaps because obviously we've got a couple of flaps now. We've got the brown one here and we've got obviously these ones where I've closed the envelope up. So that's all that we're doing is, you know, just covering those up basically. So that's there, okay. Okie dokie, that looks good. Love these colours of these papers, I must say. Really pretty. And then I've actually pulled out some bird book images that I'm going to hopefully have on this folio as well. So hopefully it's going to look really pretty. Right, that's that. And then pulling our pocket back. So again, I'm just going to now put some paper over this pocket. I mean, unfortunately, this one has not been coffee dyed. So, you know, it's looking pretty, pretty boring and plain. But, you know, hopefully it's going to all tie in really nicely by the time that we've finished. So let me just check how this would look. Oops, oh my gosh, what did I do there? Well. Looks okay, actually. So I might put that there. That was a really, really shoddy bit of tearing, wasn't it? I don't know what was going on there. Okay. Right, now unfortunately, because I've stopped the camera a few times, I've again lost track of how long I've been filming for. So once we kind of finish this part I think we will call it quits for today um, and then we'll come back in another video to you know just decorate and you know put some sort of closing bits and you know sort of mechanisms or string and things like that if we need it I'm not saying we do but you know we'll decide if we do um, to put them down to kind of finish it off nicely and then of course you know the ephemera parts to go inside the folio I'll probably just do in slow time because, um, you know, they will just be just be regular sort of ephemera pieces that we've all kind of seen and made before. So, yeah, right, let's just tear this one down. Might just have that piece there like that. Again, you know, no other purpose really other than to just cover up, you know, that envelope flap. So... Pop that one down up there. Okay. Like that. Right, so I've got that there and I'm just going to put a little bit of um, this paper. So I'll just tear this down here. Like that. It's just got that white edge there. So I'm just going to tear that, uh, cut that off. Just there. Okie dokie, like that. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So, and I mean, obviously, you know, it probably looks a bit strange, but obviously I'm going to be decorating this yet. So hopefully, <laughs> I was about to say it will look nice, but yeah, let's just say hopefully, because there's no guarantees, obviously, but just going to push that down like that okay right so we then just need to pop this together again i might just take it to the sewing machine and stitch around there 
and then we can glue that down. So I'll be back in two moments. Okie dokie, so I'm back from the sewing machine. I just stitched literally around the entire piece, so it's completely stitched in there. And then I'm just going to glue on along on the three sides. Okie dokie, like that. And then we can just pop that down. Whoa, just got that glue <laughs> everywhere. So I just mop that up a bit. Okay. Okay. So that's that pocket. And obviously in this gap, um, I will be putting some lace there. So hopefully, you know, it won't look really strange once it's kind of complete. So that's the foundation piece of our folio. You've got loads of different flaps and folds and, you know, pockets and things like that going on. And of course, you've still got potential to be able to add more flaps and things like that, which we might do in the next video. So I really hope that this was what you were all after, um, you know, with regards to kind of making a folio. I hope that this is kind of helpful. And yeah, hopefully see you guys in the next video where we will perhaps add some more flaps, add some little closures and things like that and, um, you know, start to decorate it. So thank you so much for watching and see you guys again soon. Thanks then. Bye.